Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chilua. Uh, anybody else? Before I point? <laughs> Anyone else who would like to, to add to that? All right. Uh, I think that that is a fairly good summation of what we, we looked at last week, uh, essentially on the subject of pride and humility. And Pastor took us through uh, essentially what, what humility should look like in our lives as, as well as in, in our interpersonal relationships. Uh, as I indicated, uh, this morning we'll be looking at uh, the subject of lying. And so uh, I'll kindly ask our brother Daniel to read for us Proverbs chapter 6, uh, starting from verse 16 up to verse 19. Thank you very much. Um, according to the to the dictionary, the English dictionary, there are many ways in which uh, lying can can be defined or understood. Um, but for the purposes of our discussion this morning, uh, we will understand uh, lying um, or falsehood. Um, as 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 described or as as referenced uh, in the scriptures, um, and specifically the line being referred to in this passage of scripture, when we hear the phrase "the lying tongue," uh, it's with reference to uh, making a false or untrue statement with the intention of deceiving, making a false or untrue statement uh, with the intention of deceiving. And so this uh, obviously entails uh, you deliberately deceiving people uh, in order to gain, um, to get ahead or gain favor uh, in, in, in their sight or in their eyes. Um, but before we, we delve into that, um, I would just like to to highlight or stress uh, the exact opposite, which is truth. Um, from time to time in the scriptures, we see that as believers, uh, truth is very central and integral to the faith that we have in the Lord. Truth is something that is very central to who God is in his nature. Indeed, we also see that truth is quite integral and crucial in our quest to follow the living God and to honor him in our actions. In fact, as believers or Christians, we are essentially called uh, to follow Christ who in, in, in the book of John, specifically chapter 14, is, he, he describes himself as the way, the truth, and the life. Also, we see that in the same book of John, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he speaks to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, he clearly uh, communicates to her that a time will be coming and has now come when when the Father will, when, when, when we will now seek the Lord in truth and in spirit. He actually refers to the true worshipers that the Lord seeks as those who worship him in truth and in spirit. We also hear the Lord Jesus Christ uh, when he is praying for his disciples after uh, the, the upper room discourse in, in the, basically the final hours that the Lord has with his disciples and he prays for their well-being. We see him uh, 
pray for various aspects of 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 their lives and also refer and earnestly seeks that the lord should sanctify them through his word because his word is truth and therefore if any of us take time to understand how integ how much of an integral part truth is in the faith and how uh, central truth is to the core of who God is, uh, how uh, and what we believe about the living God, uh, as well as uh, the things that we say uh, to the people around us, then it naturally follows that as true believers, we should be truth tellers. We should be truth seekers and we should be truth believers. Having said all of that, um, I'd like us to just take a bit of some time to go through uh, a set of scriptures that reference uh, the issue of falsehood or lying so that we can, get, we can gain a bit of some insight into um, what the Bible says about uh, the subject of lying. Uh, the first passage of scripture I'd like us to turn to is in the book of Leviticus and chapter 19. Leviticus and chapter 19. I'll ask uh, uh, Mr. Mackay to read that one for us. Uh, Leviticus 19 verse, verse 11. And then uh, thereafter, uh, Toko uh, will kindly read for us um, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25 uh, and then uh, Mrs. Zimbewe uh, and Felistas will read for us Uh, Toko. All right, thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for for taking us through those passages of scripture, and so we see um, we see something quite interesting in those passages. In that we see that first of all, uh, especially in addition to uh, our text, which our brother Daniel read, which is uh, uh, Proverbs chapter six, uh, and the 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 passage of consideration. Uh, for today is verse 17, uh, although the, the list of the seven sins is actually you find in verse 16 all the way to verse 19. But in verse 17, interestingly, we see that the Lord uh, actually hates, uh, one of the lies that he hates and finds abominable is that of a lying tongue. Uh, and so we, we from the onset see or get a, a very clear impression of how much God is not just uncomfortable about his children lying, but he actually finds it detestable. He actually finds it unacceptable. He actually finds the practice to be something he can't stand, something that he utterly hates and does so with a passion. And therefore, um, as believers, that ought not to be true about us and the testimony that we give as believers, we ought not to be associated with falsehood and a lying tongue. Um, I think the, the concept of, 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 of a lying tongue is one that we should be uh, familiar with. Uh, the, Lord, the, the, the Bible, when it references 
uh, haughty eyes and a lying tongue. Uh, obviously, it's not speaking uh, to the fact that the Lord uh, hates the tongue that all of the liars have uh, as, as a part of their body, but it's uh, more or less metaphoric. Uh, pretty much in the same way that many of us will hear uh, references in our local languages like, um, you know, that, 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 that guy, you know, maybe speaking about our, our colleagues, co-workers, or maybe even a dom domestic servant, and we say that person is a nice person, uh, hardworking, uh, you know, so with, with, with reference to that, to that uh, phrasing or statement, uh, your point isn't that you don't like akakuboko ego akwata, but you, you are metaphorically referring to the fact that that person is in the habit of stealing or getting things which are not his without permission. And the same can be said uh, of the phrase that is used here, the lying tongue. It's not specifically the part of the body uh, being hated by, by the living God, but it's the practice of falsehood, the habitual tendency to deceive others so that they may perceive you as better, perhaps as more intelligent, perhaps as more godly, perhaps as more wise or more wealthy or successful, or for whatever reason, you choose to say that which is uh, inaccurate or false, uh, we are told uh, the Bible, act we are told the Lord actually finds that detestable. And consequently, uh, it should be understood uh, in that light that the tendency that can be common amongst human beings, even in God's house, even amongst the children of the living God, of telling lies or uh, untruths or falsehoods from time to time for whatever reason uh, is something that should not be associated with us. In fact, when we read in John uh, chapter, f chapter 8 verse 44, uh, we actually see uh, something interesting in terms of what lying particularly is associated with. Uh, I'll ask uh, Chabala, are you able to read John chapter 8 and verse 44 for us so that we hear what the Lord Jesus Christ says lying essentially should be associated with? All right, uh, thank you very much for that. So there we have it. We hear the Lord Jesus Christ himself uh, speak of the devil as one who uh, is associated uh, with lies, who has been a liar from the very beginning, and the Lord Jesus Christ actually calls him the father of lies. And so clearly uh, this together with what uh, our sister uh, Toko read in, in the book of Ephesians, where we were being told that now that you are saved, now that you are, you, are, you are a new creation, therefore having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak truthfully with his neighbor, for you are now members of the body of Christ. And so this comes out in such a way that now that we are a new creation, now that we have been made uh, or created anew or created afresh in Christ Jesus, it should not be, uh, it should no longer be expected of us to remain uh, with the tendency or practice of lying or telling falsehoods. He, he speaks of it in terms of that may have been a part of your practice or your conduct in your past life, but now that you are a child of, now that you are children of the living God, 
uh, it is no longer proper. And that's one thing that we pick. It's no longer proper for children of the living, for, for individuals who are now children of the living God to be associated with the practice of lying. In other words, every time you lie going forward, you should feel guilty about it. You should realize that it's, it's something that the Lord hates. It is something that uh, the Lord finds detestable and it is uh, essentially an affront or um, yeah, an affront to the law that the Lord has provided, to the command that the Lord gives to us in terms of not giving false testimony uh, with regards to uh, anything that we are required to, to verify or to testify to or provide an account of. In other words, it should be known of us that we are honest people, that we tell the truth, we tell it as it is. And where we are uncomfortable to speak, uh, for example, uh, maybe you, 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 you were fired or you lost a job or you were in a relationship and things ended, but in that particular moment you don't feel like you can talk about it, perhaps it's, it's, it's more helpful for you to simply say and admit that I can't talk about it right now or I'm not comfortable to talk about it because you know that if you go into it, there's a high likelihood that you may uh, give half-truths or you may speak in a way that might malign your former employers or might malign your, uh, your former suitor or, uh, and so on and so forth, or in an effort to avoid uh, falsehood, half-truths, uh, and deceiving any of your listeners so that they might see you in better light or so that you might gain favor. This could also be true uh, in business, you, if you are involved in, in, in any form of informal business or employment, um, or let me just say if you, have a, a, you, know, you are, you are self-employed or you are involved in, in, in the running of any kind of business, you will know that time and again there are instances where uh, a, a, a client's question or inquiry if responded to with some kind of information could lead to uh, a business engagement which will give more profit. So you see it, uh, I, I, I don't know whether you, 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 you've had instances where you take something to a tailor or somebody who fixes shoes and what you want to mend is just a small portion uh, but then they give you the impression that even if you mend that small portion the rest of it you know will come off so it's best for you to just mend the whole thing even the part that is still fine or reinforce it and in some cases they could be uh, they could be telling the truth because they've seen the type of shoe or the type of material, but in several cases, most such advice is given because you, if you do that, you will then end up paying more and that will be for the benefit or the interest of um, the, 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 the person who, who, who is receiving that payment. Uh, and also you will face instances where based on uh, what the client wants, uh, you, they will actually pay more, but you as the business proprietor or the business owner, you know that uh, you, they don't probably necessarily need all of that. They don't need to spend all of that money. What needs to be done is just a small section. But you realize that if you say that, then they will pay you less. And so you are really, uh, you know, uh, at conflict in terms of should I be honest and just tell them the truth that it's not necessary, you know, to spend that much money or to get all of this work done because we could achieve the same same thing simply by doing A, B, and C, but they will pay half or a third of what they would have uh, originally paid, and you end up um, either not doing that or you end up simply going along with what they want and re-emphasizing that that's the best option even though deep down you know it is not because it will result in 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 more revenue or, or uh, you making bigger profits 
Uh, and so from the passages of, of scripture that we've, that we've looked at, uh, we clearly see that God hates lying with a passion. We clearly see that lying is inappropriate uh, for children of the living God. We also see that lying is an affront uh, to the law of the living God because remember, he tells us uh, uh, a number of things. And in fact, when we, when we just refer to the Ten Commandments, uh, the issue of honesty and lying is one of them. And we are being told uh, that we should not give false testimony. Uh, but also we see that lying is a failure to love our neighbor. Uh, I think the passage that Mr. Mackay read in Leviticus, uh, if, you, if you look up the context or the title, it's, it's actually the Lord Jesus Christ. It's actually God giving uh, instruction to the, to, to the Israelites uh, in terms of how they should conduct themselves and how they should interact uh, amongst themselves as well as with people around them. Uh, and 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 he tells them a number of things that they should do or should not do uh, as as an act of love for their neighbor and it is in the context of that that we find the words you shall not steal you shall not deal falsely you shall not lie to one another because it's assumed that when we do all of these things uh, you know the, the the dealing falsely the stealing and the lying then we are not acting in love because to act in love uh, is to act selflessly it's to act out of consideration for for the other party that we are dealing with and that is not often not the case with 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 lying so um i would like to pause briefly uh, at this point uh, and just ask from your personal experiences what are some of the most common reasons that especially believers uh, or find themselves uh, in a situation that they have to lie, not because you're trying to justify it, but just what you think often leads to people who, um, who lie to lie. Or when believers lie, from your own observation, what do you think usually tends to contribute to that? We are not familiar with lies. <laughs> we live around people who always tell the truth. Any common reasons from your observation, personal observation? Yes, Mop. Just be a bit loud. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, anybody else? Uh, common reason why people lie? Daniel, can you think up of any common reason why uh, people tend to lie when they lie?
Because you can see that everybody else seems to agree with what the Bible study leader has said or with what Pastor Mbewe has said or with what the elder has said. Uh, and, and so for you to be seen, to be perceived as one who doesn't, you know, completely agree with that for whatever reason, you would end up pretending. Uh, that you do agree and uh, that you, you do get the point or that the explanation does make sense just so that you can fit in uh, or not be perceived as different or not fully of the same persuasion as everybody else. Okay, so I think maybe unless there's an, another hand. Uh, okay, so let me start with uh, my sister on the far end. Uh, remind me your name. Grace. Okay, so we'll start with Grace, and then uh, Vasa Felino will also say something. Yes. Well, I feel like some do it because they fear appearing guilty. For example? Well, let's say you've been accused. Okay, you, you know you did something, and huh? then you are asked, did you do this? Because you know that if you, if you say, yes, I did it, it will, it will put you in trouble, and you'll be guilty of that thing. So you obviously you say no, because you don't want to be guilty. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, Sefelin. Yes, people do that for the sake of, I mean, to get something like the example of the initial servant he has. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, and Felicitas. Um, it seems to me that there is a relationship um, between lying and pride. Uh, the reason why I say there is a relationship, I'm just thinking of myself. The moment, the times that I've lied, uh, mm -hmm. is to do with um, preservation, self-preservation, than really the truth, uh, which is at stake. Like you rightly mentioned, it's the image that is created. Wanting to be seen a good person when <laughs> that is not there. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's just the consciousness of how deceitful our hearts are. That all it takes is uh, an occasion or an opportunity uh, for this and the sin of life to, to come out. That's why I mentioned that it's related to being pride. Proud because yes. I, don't want, I don't want to be seen like I'm a failure or uh, why should I do this as a Christian? Yeah. It's not right. Yeah. So uh, uh, relating it to Judith Bonanima's point, mm -hmm. I'm a Christian, so aligned to this group, this is not supposed to be the case. So just the sickness of, of the heart. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for, for, for those contributions. Anybody else uh, before we proceed? who would like to uh, make reference or suggest another common reason uh, 
people who lie, especially believers, uh, when they do lie, what typically tends to contribute to that? Yes, my sister, Mrs. Kamang. Maybe for the interest of everyone, just say your name and then, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot. Um, and, and it's true, uh, a tendency to, to please the people, to uh, keep up appearances, uh, to be seen as you know, not different or, or, or as one who belongs or one who shares the general uh, persuasion or belief or understanding regarding a particular thing. Uh, those tend to place uh, as believers uh, regularly for from time to time in situations where we end up having to lie, where we end up having to lie, as well as, as was mentioned earlier, instances where we somehow don't think that telling the truth and honoring God will result in any good or in your self-preservation or in you getting out of that very difficult situation and so uh, remember at the beginning we had uh, referenced a passage of scripture in the book of John chapter 8 and verse 44 where we saw the Lord Jesus Christ associate lying with the devil and his influence uh, we we see it also in book of Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, how that the devil uh, essentially distorts a particular reality so that Eve, as well as Adam subsequently, would believe that it would be in their best interest to disobey God, that it would be in their best interest to disregard clear instruction, uh, and that it would be in their best interest to also be knowledgeable like the living God, to also know good and evil, to also know and be wise uh, rather than remain where the Lord placed them uh, with the, the limited uh, knowledge and wisdom. Uh, and, and so the devil not only did that in the beginning, but he continues to do that uh, to each one of us in the various circumstances that we go through. He has a tendency to distort realities within our lives so that we think by lying or by going with his suggestion, uh, we, would be, we would end up better off. Uh, but in the, in the end, what we see is that we end up, uh, number one, dishonoring the living God, and then number two, uh, essentially in that moment, we realize that we were just blinded to uh, to the truth of who God is in terms of his nature and his dealings with us, but also uh, we were blinded to his faithfulness because in the past he has dealt with us faithfully. He has always looked out for our well-being. He has always been uh, by our side. So in that particular moment, because we listen to the evil one as he tries to deceive us with half-truths and distorted realities, uh, which essentially are lies, uh, we believe the devil's lie and we end up doing the many wrong things that we do in our lives, even when we clearly know what we ought to be doing. So uh, that's, that's uh, another very uh, clear thing that we see brought out uh, in the scriptures. But also we see um, that at times it can be uh, as a result of um, wanting to be polite, yeah, uh, wanting not to offend or make somebody feel uncomfortable, just to make them feel good about themselves. And we end up saying something that is untrue, 
uh, or maybe we don't want to hurt their feelings and we end up saying something that is partly true or completely a lie. But also we, 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 we can appreciate the fact that um, at times it's a failure to own up and face consequences for our actions, for wrongdoing. Can anybody cite an example either in the Bible or in their own life uh, when somebody had to lie uh, because you know they were trying to cover up or they didn't they were not ready to face the consequences for the actions they had taken. David, did anything like that ever happen with David? Come on, please. Yes, my sister, America. Sorry? Okay, all right. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, there was another hand somewhere here. Uh, what about David? We don't remember, uh, we seem to only remember the wonderful thing in, in the Psalms. In Second Samuel uh, chapter 11, what, what, what happens there? Does, can somebody uh, speak to what happens there in terms of lying and um, wanting to cover up? All right. It seems uh, people don't want to <laughs> to speak to that. All right. Uh, we see we see in the book of Second Samuel, uh, chapter eleven, uh, that the that essentially uh, at a point when David uh, falls into sexual sin, um, he goes into a mode of trying and discovers that this this lady that he had slept with, which was uh, a wife to one of his loyal soldier loyal soldiers uh, who was out fighting for for his nation, uh, he goes into this mode where he's trying to cover up. He's trying to make sure no one finds out. Uh, if possible, it should be perceived to be uh, a legitimate child of of the husband who's out. Uh, at war, and so he he undertakes a series of actions meant to cover up, as well as deceive the masses uh, with regards to what essentially happened, and that res that results in him behaving in a very unexpected way uh, for the man that we know to be a man after God's own heart. Uh, he essentially behaves. Uh, uh, in, in fact, even when he calls Uriah from battle and brings him into the palace and gets him drunk, uh, Uriah's behavior and reasoning is still far much better than that of the, the, the honorable David. Uh, because he's still able to not to realize that even as drunk as he is, that I can't go back home and sleep in a comfortable bed and enjoy myself with my wife, whilst my fellow soldiers are out there putting their lives on the line, he's still thinking in terms of honor. He's still thinking in terms of what is right, even as drunk as he is. And yet the sober David is busy trying to trick him uh, into uh, you know, doing something that will result in, in, in you know, everyone believing that the child that would come out of that is essentially a legitimate child. So I, I guess we can go on and on citing uh, examples or common reasons why people tend to lie when they lie, both from the scriptures uh, and outside the scriptures. But fundamentally, uh, we see that lying uh, almost always results as always, almost always results from uh, being too preoccupied with ourselves and our well-being and our self-actualization, our self-image and, you know, our success, uh, our reputation and so on and so forth, rather than being focused 
on God, who he is, what he has promised in his word, and what he expects of each one of us. And so even when we are called uh, to be truthful or to always tell the truth, we should remember that honesty for a believer primarily is not just about information accuracy, but it's about honoring the God that we serve because he says that we should be truthful, because he says that we should be honest regardless of the circumstances. So there will be instances where you are given inaccurate information and you convey that information. Uh, I don't necessarily think that will constitute lying because as we be defined lying at the very beginning, uh, it entails deliberately deceiving people with the intention to get ahead or gain favor. It involves you saying something untrue, inaccurate, with the intent of deceiving. And therefore, uh, we should be mindful of those temptations for us to lie. And rather than focus on those life and death situations where a gun will be put to our head and then we are being taught to say something that is true or they will kill the entire family, which probably will, will not happen. Oftentimes, what we deal with are everyday situations in our workplaces, in our homes, in our school settings, uh, in our universities, or whichever social sphere that you happen to find yourself in, where you are pressured to either belong or stand as the old one out, to either be seen as successful and progressive or, or progressive in your thinking, and therefore they are talking about some controversial issue. Uh, it could be a social issue. It could be something, you know, around the areas of the LGBTQ and uh, all sorts of other things that you may, subs you may not subscribe to. But because you don't want to be seen as different, you don't want to be seen as weird, you don't want to be seen as not progressive or open-minded, uh, and you don't want to be seen as, as somebody who is backward, you end up uh, giving half-truths or complete lies just so that you, you may be perceived in a particular light or you may please your audience, that you may appear to your audience as somebody who is progressive, who is knowledgeable, who is smart, who is considerate, who is polite, uh, and yet what you are saying is actually not true and you know it in your heart. Uh, we are told that that uh, constitutes uh, lying. And as human beings, we are in a habit of doing a lot of what we do. And for those who lie, uh, and don't feel guilty about it, uh, you can be assured it becomes a regular practice. And so they have that lying tongue. They have got that tendency. Whenever they are backed against the wall, they will always come out with lies so that they can be let free. Whenever they are made, they are put in an awkward situation, they believe a, a lie, a small lie, a clever lie, a half lie, half truth, can be a very effective way of getting out of tight spots or tight corners, and yet you forget that the living God, uh, for him, uh, he doesn't look at the magnitude of the lie uh, or the consequences of the lie. For him, he just looks at the fact that you deliberately misled people, you deliberately deceived people so that you could be perceived in a certain light or in uh, a particular way. So um, before we close, I will ask that we, I, I will open it up for questions, uh, essentially reactions to, to what's been presented uh, or shared or discussed, um, especially around the subject of, of falsehood and lying uh, and honesty, um, just so that we can try and maybe clarify, maybe research further or you know, uh, but at least have some clarity where you feel that's necessary. Any questions? Any questions? 
All right. I take it that was a very clear Bible study. <laughs> okay. Yes, Daniel. Egyptian midwives? Yeah, the midwives in Egypt who uh, they basically like uh, to preserve the lives of children and uh, God also saw that as a noble thing. Yeah, so I think the question was sort of left handed so I don't know if uh, we can address it now that we're looking at life or we address it in past directions. The latter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, I think it would be good if if, um, if if pastor can address it uh, or if we can address it when he's around. Um, but what I would say uh, as a quick comment on that is that what we typically see in both uh, scenarios is that it, it's essentially people who uh, are not necessarily in the group of God's children. We both in the case of, of Rahab who is being referred to as the prostitute and then also in the case of, of the Egyptian midwives who typically are not the Hebrew or the Bible believing people. Uh, and so what we see from my observation is individuals who ordinarily uh, would not be expected to want to honor God, but for whatever reason, in that particular moment, they go against what what typically, you know, the ordinary person would do out there of self-preservation or, you know, considering your own safety uh, and essentially assuming that God's moral demand at that particular moment is more important than the requirement of uh, or, or an instruction or a legal requirement by the king himself uh, and which is uh, the, which was the case both with Rahab uh, and also with uh, the mid uh, mid midwives the egyptian midwives so they the, in both scenarios they seem to want to honor god rather than preserve themselves or their image or gain anything you know, uh, something that can be perceived as, as an advantage or as gain in that particular situation, uh, they are essentially risking their lives uh, so that uh, the, 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 the God of the Israelites would be honored and his will would be uh, carried out. Um, and then, of course, in, in the book of Hebrews, we hear those scenarios being referenced as people who acted in faith or people who honored the living God uh, with their action. And we almost get no reference to, to the fact that there was some deceit involved or there was some lying involved. So I would probably uh, understand that to be uh, an exception uh, to the rule or an instance where ordinarily we would expect the action to be frowned upon uh, but the Bible uh, seems to present it as an action which springs out of a, a deep conviction that the living God will be honored uh, by what I am about to do rather than self-preservation or acting in your own interest in that particular moment. Uh, so yeah, I think essentially that's what I'll, I'll try to say. And then of course I'll try to extend that to be reason for us not to be preoccupied with loopholes or instances when it's okay to lie, uh, but rather focus on the importance uh, and the centrality of truth in the gospel, in the nature of God himself and his dealing with his people, uh, as well as just generally in our pursuit uh, 
uh, of, of the living God and our efforts to try and honor him in what we do and say, uh, rather than look for where the boundary is uh, and how close can we get to the boundary and are there any areas of that boundary where we can cross and say something that is not true uh, and it's still fine. So that would be my comment. But pastor, it would definitely be good to deal with it with when pastor is, a, is around, uh, but that would be my, my comment. Uh, anybody else? I hope it's not a difficult question as well. <laughs> okay, any other question before we close? Because I think we've run out of time. All right, looks like uh, uh, all is well and we, we, we have understood the subject matter fairly well. Um, as we come to a close, just many thanks to all of you who, um, for coming through and attending the Bible study session. Thank you for your participation, your questions, uh, and helping us read through those passages of scripture, uh, and also um, grateful to, to each one of you uh, for, for taking the time to to, to attend today's session, session, and therefore I can only hope that in one way or another uh, it's been beneficial, that we've learned something or we've been encouraged uh, to, in, in the direction of honesty, in the direction of our pursuit um, for truth, our quest for truth in what we believe, uh, in what we profess, but also in terms of uh, our quest to be associated with truth telling. May that be true about all of us. May we be known to be honest people. May we be known to be people who um, always uh, want to, to be truthful um, as long as it depends on you, regardless of the consequences and regardless of uh, how people might perceive you after the truth telling. Uh, that brings us to the end of our Bible study session today. Um, I will hand over to, to, to the song leader uh, for the rest of our worship service and also I will indicate that for next, uh, for, for next week we'll be, we'll be looking at another uh, which is the third scene uh, in, in that list. So thank you once more. Uh, I'll just ask that we quickly close in a word of prayer and then we proceed to our main worship service. Let's pray together. Our God and our Father who is in heaven, Lord, we are very grateful to you for how you've been with us in this, our Bible study session. We are very grateful to you for uh, the manner in which you've walked us through the subject of honesty and falsehood, how you've shown us clearly from the scriptures what your stance is with regards to lying and how that uh, you find utterly dis detestable uh, a lying tongue. And therefore, Lord, uh, having clearly seen how truth is associated with you and your cause and your gospel um, and your people, uh, it is our prayer that you may grant us strength and grace to be truthful individuals, to be truth tellers, to be truth seekers, and to be uh, truth believers, to be individuals who are known for our honesty uh, so that we don't even need to, to swear or to put up any forms of verification, but indeed to just let our yes, our yeses be yes and our noes be no. May you aid us in this, our quest to honor you. May you be with us uh, in, even as we go through the various uh, situations uh, in our life's journey where we are tempted to uh, give half-truths or to lie so that we may not uh, stand out as awkward or weird or not progressive, but instead that you may grant us the grace and the strength to be able to stand up for what is right and for what is uh, truth uh, or what is accurate. May we truly seek you uh, even this morning and worship you in truth and in spirit. Uh, thank you for enabling each and every person present here 
to come through and to participate in this uh, part of uh, our worship to you and our time together in your presence. And so, Lord, as we proceed to the main worship service, it is our prayer that you will be with, that you will be with us, that you will continue to, to grace us with your presence, that you may you will be with the song leader as well as he leads us in song, and that indeed each and every aspect and element of our worship service will be one that is uh, directed to the honor and glory of your name. Be with us, for it's in Christ's name that we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Can get the people at the back. Good morning. Good morning. All right. It's, it's, it's indeed a joy and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord today. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I hope and trust that uh, you are glad to be here. It is a privilege to be here because many of us are unwell, others are not alive today, but God saw it fit that he could give you a chance. So it's a privilege. So I want you just to attend to your friend either by uh, way of a fist bump and just, and just greet them, the neighbor on your left, on the right, and just greet them and say, good morning. <laughs> okay. Uh, Daniel, can we do that?